Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Limoed and today on Hot Limoed we're getting into the 2023 Fashion Awards. Now these are held in London and they essentially are one of the celebrations of the fashion industry. They give out awards to the best model of the year, the best fashion designer in different categories and such. So we're going to be talking about some of the red carpet looks that showed up and honestly, like the CFDA awards a month ago or so, celebrities show up. They want to be there. But also there's some of the fashion girlies that we love very, very much in attendance as well. So we're going to get into it. First up, we have Ada a catch, and she is wearing Knowles, which is a British-based brand. We've talked about Knowles a little bit on the channel before, but something that I think is pretty signature about Knowles as a brand is this patent leather little bodice that we're seeing. It has a cutout for the actual bust area, so there isn't actually like a cup sitting there, but it does also have straps, which I think is really interesting and intriguing. But as for the rest of the dress, there is a sheer and very draped brown diaphanous fabric that sits underneath the little corset situation, but also moves down and also moves up to create a sort of faux one-sided cape situation. I appreciate it. I think that wearing a British-based brand is usually pretty good when it comes to the British Fashion Awards. I appreciate that. But at the same time, I think that for Knowles, which is a smaller brand that is trying to like, I guess, also build in a little bit of red carpetage elements, it also makes sense. It's cute. It's fine. It's understandable, a little bit more digestible to the everyday person. Do I want like a little bit more fashion? Sure, of course. But at the same time, I think Ada was obviously up for model of the year. So she wants to do a little bit more glamour, I could also see as well. So it's cute. It's there. It's fine. It doesn't make me mad by any means, but I'm also not like, ah. Next up, we have Amelia de Moldenberg, and she is wearing Chapova Lowena. Now this I love. I think this is super fun. I think this captures the Chapova Loena attitude and ethos. We can see that the Chapova Loena very signature carabiner skirt has been transformed into a pair of pants in this black silk. The actual waist of this pant is really a belt and then the carabiners come in, it exposes the stomach, which a lot of those little Chipotle and skirts do. And then it moves into a pair of silky wide leg pants. And then there is a matching black jacket, which has a little lace up detail on the side, which I think sort of keeps this idea of hardware coming in. And underneath that, you have a white shirt that has not a tie, but rather pieces of like keychain or necklace that have come together to create a faux tie, which again, I love. I like when people divert from the traditional tie situation. I used to do that all the time with necklaces and I thought it was great. The fabric's a little tough, I'm gonna say, obviously, because it is a little showing in terms of wrinklage in that pelvic area, the way it looks, and I agree, I don't love it. But at the same time, I do really like that Chipotle Loena, which is a small, again, British brand, I like that they're jumping out of their usual signature style, which is a skirt, and building that signature style into a pant. I think it's cool, I think it's fun. I think this is a nice take on formal wear, but done in that Chipova, upcycled, a little scrappy style. I think Amelia killed it, Chipova Luena killed it, this is great. Next up we have Anne Hathaway, who is wearing Valentino, and she's wearing this gorgeous dress. It's vintage. It's from 1993. It's a scoop neck white style that hits the floor and is made up of all little slivers and strings of fabric that honestly sculpt the body. So you can see the bust line has this sort of sculptural detail. Right underneath that, there's a sort of half circle effect. And at the same time, you have two bands of these horizontal stripes that sort of suck in the waist. So again, it's utilizing the fabric to actually create and contour the body, which I love. And then it's a pretty simple tiered little skirt that again, uses these white string styles to create a full gown effect. I think it's fun. I like when people wear vintage. Valentino, I think has a great archive and I think that it always should be brought out. Overall, I think it's nice. I think it works. I love an archival moment. I like the cut. I like the fact that it utilizes fabric to actually create. I think it's wonderful. Next up, we have Anak Yai, who is also up for model of the year. Personally, Anak was my vote. We will get into that in a little bit. Also, we all know that as people that watch Hotline Mode, we're smarter than like sending other people that win certain awards that aren't the people that we wanted to win hate messages because that's crazy. You're delusional. Go to therapy. That's my big thoughts here. But anyway, back to Anak. She's wearing this beautiful turtleneck Ferragamo gown. It looks like it's a crystallized style and that's where you get this sort of metallic look and it fits her fantastically. The thing that I also love, which is very Maximilian Davis coated, is this band of leather that's asymmetrical and actually sits around the hip area and creates intriguing eye drawing moment, but at the same time fits really good. 
looks really good actually kind of works and it makes sense. I like it. I think it's fun. I think it adds in the history of Ferragamo as a leather goods, specifically leather footwear brand. And also it definitely highlights a very intriguing area. Listen, there's a lot of designers I feel like that are doing these sort of added bandage styles over the past few seasons. And I feel like Max understands how to do it. This is a great example of understanding how to do it. Next up we have Ashley Park who is wearing David Coma. It seems to be a pretty simple fitted black gown. It has a gigantic a zebra angel fish, I don't know. But it has one of those that is made out of little pieces of silver mirror and black sequins that moves across the bust line, drapes itself down the waist, drapes itself across a little bit of the waist, and then also creates a strap to uphold the dress. Listen, I'm not normally like a big, huge David Coma stan. I usually think the pieces, they're nice, but you know, they're not for me. This I like. Do I love it from a personal aesthetic perspective? No. But do I like the fact that if you're gonna do a piece of embroidery, embellishment, all of that, is the fish embellishment my personal aesthetic? No. But do I love the fact that you're actually utilizing the fish embellishment to create elements of the dress like a strap rather than having straps that actually take away from your vantage point of looking at the fish or the way that the fish moves down and also sort of highlights a little bit of hip and waist. Like that's nice, smart design. The rest of the dress, really simple, fitted, easy. I understand it. I get it. I respect it. It's not for me but I respect it. Next up we have Dan Levy who is wearing Loewe. Now Loewe is designed by Jonathan Anderson who is a Northern Irish designer based in London. But Dan Levy is wearing, and you can't really see it, the high-waisted crystal jeans from the most recent Loewe men's show, which are very much so crazy. And I have very little love-hate relations in terms of Jonathan Anderson, but this is my love-hate with him, is he designs jeans for Loewe that my short body can literally never wear. Never. Never ever. These high-waisted jeans, I would love to wear them, but I cannot. Remember the fisherman jeans, early Loewe? Those were like the hot ones and they had the, the rolled up cuffs. Cannot wear them. I'm too short. I just, I, my legs are not long enough. My torso is too short. It's just, it, it doesn't work for me. And I feel like me and Dan Levy, probably in the same height category somewhat. I'm not sold that I can wear them here. I think this is a good example of that. The other thing is the blazer I feel like is a little too big. It's a little too baggy because the whole point is the jeans. So like if we're gonna do high-waisted, let's do high-waisted. Unfortunately, not every silhouette is made to compliment everybody. If you want to wear that, go for it. Be my guest. Do I think that it will naturally compliment your body due to the silhouette? No, I don't. Unfortunately, that's just a matter of life. Nothing we can do about it. I love the idea. I love the element of going for it, wearing those high-waisted pieces. I love the crystals in general. I just think that the styling of the shirt and the blazer over top kind of kills the idea of the high-waisted pant. At the same time, sort of leaves us yearning for more. Next up, we have Gwendolyn Christie, who is wearing not Giles Deacon. I apologize. It's Giles Deacon. I'm sorry to Giles. In that Beyonce Renaissance video, I said Giles, and I feel like I usually say Giles. It's Giles Deacon. Sorry, Giles, if you're watching. I apologize. But Nobody has to apologize for this dress. I love it. It's great. It's this beautiful black silk style with full seamage running through it to really highlight Gwendolyn's figure. And the thing that I love is like the Beyonce Renaissance style, you're getting a really intriguing sort of bust detail. So the fabric is gathered in a way that allows this sort of movement up and you get this really sort of almost wispy flame-like silk that juts around Gwendolyn's head. I love the matching black stole. I think that it adds a little bit of an element of bringing it all together and at the same time, it's just fun. It's cute, it's intriguing. That bust is really the important part. It's the thing that I really care about. It frames her face really, really beautifully. Also, if you don't know, Giles and Gwendolyn are married. So, you know, the other thing is like, if you're gonna dress your wife, you gotta make sure she looks good. They understand. Next up we have Gwyneth Paltrow who is wearing Valentino. Now this is also a vintage look. It's actually from the fall 1965 Old Couture collection. So the dress is an empire cut style and it actually is meant to have a little V in the neckline. So that's why you see the little plunge. I think it's cute. I think it's interesting. And then there is this beautiful little tulle jacket that is full of crystals and feathers in again, Valentino Rosso, which is their famous color. The color that is very much so associated with Valentino. The new color is the pure Palo Piccioli pink. The original, the OG, is Valentino Rosso. So that's why you're getting Gwyneth in this dress. Honestly, I think it's cute. I think it's a beautiful piece. 
weirdly enough, I feel like I keep seeing people, especially this particular event, and we'll talk about it, I think, later when we get into the upcoming Met Gala. Everybody's pulling out the OG vintage styles that probably shouldn't actually be worn, but we're pulling them out a little bit early because the whole new Met Gala theme is about pieces that shouldn't really be worn. I'm very intrigued by this trend, specifically at this event. But I like this dress on Gwyneth. I think it works. I think it's a beautiful historical artifact. I like the coat. I like the empire waistline on her. I think she looks great. I'm into it. Next up we have India Amartifio and she is wearing Hui Shan Zhang and honestly, I'm into it. I think it's cute. It's pretty much a mermaid silhouette in a really sort of light gray and there's an emphasis on texture in little, I'm gonna say this is chiffon. If it's not chiffon then it's tulle but I feel like it's chiffon and it's in a beautiful sort of V detail to really highlight that and also builds into straps as well. And then you have a continuation of this gathered little chiffon at the bottom. That's what creates this sort of voluminous mermaid shape. I think it's cute. I think it's a great way to do a really simple, easy dress, but at the same time, it has elements of intrigue, interest to it, but it doesn't scream heavy embellishment or bright color. It really is about silhouette, simplicity, and craft. So I like it, it's nice. Next up we have Iris Law who fished out a vintage Vivian Westwood 1971 Let It Rock chicken bone tea. I don't wanna say that Iris is a hot Modi cause she probably isn't. But in my head, considering we just put out a video on the history of Vivian Westwood and we included the chicken bone shirt in the thumbnail and that was five days before this event, taste, always recognizes taste, you know? I love this shirt. You can learn more about the shirt if you actually go watch the Vivian Westwood video, which you should all do because like, it's really good. We put a lot of work into it. We did research. You're gonna get edumacated. But at the same time, this tee is actually kind of amazing. It is made up of a black tank top, sleeveless, obviously. And then there are literal chains holding literal chicken bones from a restaurant that Vivian used to go to. And that's how they made this. And this is one of, I would say, the defining styles of punk. And also very much a part of how Vivian Westwood, I think, changed traditional fashion with her stores. But this is also pre-Vivian doing runway shows and things like that. This is very, very early Viv, very much so in that punk cultural subculture experience. And it's one of the reasons why she's so lauded as a punk fashion icon. Again, if you want to learn more, go check out the vid. As for the skirt that she's wearing. It's Jean-Paul Gaultier. I believe that it is also vintage. It's okay. I mean, it's an intriguing style. I appreciate the fact that we're like working on styling here. We're not just taking like full runway and running with it. The fact that there is a space between the waistband and the secondary waistband and these strings also sort of hold up the skirt itself. It's this sort of maroon. It looks... I don't want to say silky, but it looks more sort of synthetic-y, gathered style, but I'm not obsessed with it. I will say, I think that that shirt really should have just been the focus. I don't think we needed like a fashion skirt to really like accentuate it. And if we were going to go for something a little bit more fashion, I feel like we could have worked with something within that punk realm. Maybe like a old Vivian Westwood meets new Chapova Luena or any of the other cool young British designers that are pretty punky in that regard. A plaid would have worked. A black leather would have worked. I just think there are other things that we could have went for in that regard to really accentuate the fact that the shirt is the shirt and it's iconic. Also, again, Iris, this would have been great. At the Met Gala this year, this is on the theme vibe, you know what I mean? This is what we're looking for, so just do it again. Listen, I'm sold on the shirt. As for the skirt, it's sold separately. It would have been sold to me, but if it had been by itself. Next up we have Jodie Comer, and my thing about this is she's wearing Victoria Beckham, and I don't think I've ever said a sentence like this, but I kind of feel bad for Victoria Beckham, because why would you wear that? Jody, It's not that it's like a bad piece or whatever. It's a cocktail sleeveless dress based on tailored jacket. It has a little bit of a V or whatever. But like this is a daytime interview for a film promo look. This is a going out to a small dinner with a jewelry brand look. This is not an award show look. Listen, I'm all into mini dresses or whatever and blah 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 blah. That's great. Wonderful. Like this, it's like you want me to not like Victoria Beckham. And like, it's not that I hate Victoria Beckham, but she's also like kind of rebranding and like doing a little bit more fashion. So like, we're not even really giving her the chance. She's trying, VB. So JC needs to help her along because this is not the look. Next up we have Kit Connor who's wearing Loewe. It's pretty simple. It's hard for Kit Connor to top his crystallized pant situation. So 
I respect that. It's a black tank top. It's a black pair of pants. I do like the pants. But the thing that's really the important element is this gold, almost like butter yellow silk style with a little fabric flower brooch on it. It's okay. I'm not gooped about it. I'm not gagged. It looks like something I would wear. And like, I have the ability to look at myself and say, maybe that's not what you want to look like. I know what I'm working with. It's not much. And this feels very Luke outfit. So I don't love it. I think that the jacket's nice. I think things fit well and all that. It's just overall a tad bit underwhelming. I understand again, coming off crystal high-waisted jeans, it's a little tough to top that, but I don't know. I think there's something we could have jazzed up a little bit more to make it a moment we'll remember. And speaking of moments to remember, I don't want to remember this. It's a strapless dress that is pretty much a tunic and it's made up of Prada triangles with little crystals on top and they're all mirror styles and they sit over top of black fabric and then there's a pant underneath. And my thing is like, listen, I get it. I understand a tunic. I love a tunic with a pant, but my issue is I think that the dress, too, too long, way too long. And I think that the pant, you can't really do like a cigarette kind of pant with a tunic. You gotta go wide leg. You gotta go silhouette. You gotta go shape. The length of the dress, not great. I think that the pant shape, not great. It steamrolls from there and it makes me sad because like I love Prada. I love triangles. I like reflective things. I like black pants. You know, I like all of those things, but in this context, I do not like them together at all. Next up, we have Lewis Hamilton who is wearing Wales Bonner. Wales Bonner is the hot girl brand right now. It's also the hot boy brand because Wales Bonner started as menswear brand, if you didn't know. Lewis is wearing what looks to be a linen white coat, or maybe it's a little bit off-white, it's a little creamy. There is a white t-shirt of sorts, or a white tank top of sorts, and then a pair of silky little pants, a black boot, and a lot of jewelry and brochiness going on in this regard. Here's my thing. I love the jacket. I think the jacket's beautiful. I think it's stunning. I think it's lovely. I want that jacket. I just wish that there was some pant action in the same fabric. I don't mind the white on white on white and they're all different shades. I think it's okay. I think it is doable. I don't hate it. It's just, I would have loved a matching pant. But the boots, they're fine. They're cute. I do really like the accessories. I like the brooch. I like the necklace. I think they work. I think they're fun. I think they're quirky. They're beautiful pieces again. It's not my favorite thing altogether, but I don't think that they're awful either. Next up, we have Lila Moss. Now, normally I don't talk about Lila Moss, but Lila Moss, if you don't know, is Kate Moss's daughter, and she is wearing Nenzi Dojaka, who is a British-based designer who I really love. She won the LVMH Prize. She makes these really beautiful sort of slinky dresses, but they're all about sort of gathering, using strings and straps to like contour and play with the body, their cutouts, sheer, all that stuff. Now, you'd look at this dress that is this beautiful little silver style. It seems to be backless. It seems to have cutouts on the waist as well. There is that signature Nenzi Dojaka sort of gathering bust area and the strings that move down and around. It hits the floor really beautifully. You can see there's a black sort of thong bikini underneath and some may say okay like why do you care cute dress sure but like hmm. this is literally a reference to an iconic Kate Moss look which is the sheer silver slip dress like when the slip dress came back in and everybody's like oh my god slip dress is so chic the image of Kate Moss in a sheer silver slip dress is very much so an iconic reference point I love the fact that Nenzi and Lila came together to create this. Like, this is a beautiful take on it. It's a wonderful way for Nenzi to take that iconic look, bring it into her own brand. There's some designers that they bring it into their own brand and, like, it might look like dog doo doo. Just saying, I reference, I'm making a nod, let me get my little articles about it, whatever, and I'll have a great day. But no, no, no. I think Nenzi did a great job. It fits her immaculately. It updates that original look to feel much more a Nenzi, but also I think a little bit more modern in the 2020s rather than just a recreation of a dress from the 1990s. All in all, this is a moment. I think this is a clap. It's a tad bit Nepo, let's be real. You know, Lila's mom is Kate Moss, so you connect Kate Moss's dress to Lila that way. But at the same time, it could have been really bad. I'm going to give her credit where credit is due. I appreciate both of them. I think that they did an amazing job here. Next up, we have Lisa Rinna, who's wearing Chet Lowe. Chet Lowe is one of my favorite designers based out of the UK. He does these amazing 
they're called the durian spikes. You've probably seen them. They remind everybody of like those popcorn tops from way back when. The technique is called shibori and it's a way that you actually heat manipulate fabric so that it creates those little spikes in the dress. Now this dress is off the shoulder. There are large spikes that sit in this sort of off the shoulder strap and neckline. And then Chet has been playing with the idea of utilizing and almost ombre or gradiating the size of these little spikes in the past few clubs. Collections. So I love that at the waist, there's no spike. It allows the waist to essentially assert itself as that area it's defining and at the same time gives you a little bit of a break between the two. The sleeves actually have little tiny baby spikes. I love it. I think it's super fun. And then at the hips area, you have again this spiking out of the little durian spikes. And then we move down and it's a pretty simple little, I think rib knit style as we move down towards the floor. I like the look, I think it's fun, I think it's cute. I understand if people don't like it, you know, this one's really, I think a personal preference style, but as somebody that's been watching Chet Lo since Chet Lo showed up on the fashion scene, I think that Chet's building a brand smartly. He's making sure to diversify an aesthetic and a technique that is very much so now a part of his brand. And I can't be mad at some for doing their signature if they're doing it well. Next up we have Maisie Williams who is wearing Simone Rocha. Love, love, love. This is a full length gown, but the thing that I kind of love about Simone Rocha and I love about Maisie is Simone Rocha is not really somebody that's gonna do like a nipped in waist. She does them, it's not that she doesn't, but she also isn't afraid to just go full A-line, isn't afraid of big silhouettes. And so I feel like that's what we have here. We have this beautiful floor length A-line gown, which normally I think people would try to shy away from because they'd be a little scared of it. And that's what I also love about Maisie, is Maisie as an actor, but I think also as somebody that understands the fashion industry and likes the fashion industry, is very much so into chameleoning herself, method acting in the brand that she's wearing. And I think that that's a great thing here, is she's not afraid of the dress, the dress isn't afraid of her, and so she carries it really, really beautifully. It's this white style, it has these beautiful little swags that create sort of stripes. There's little flower embroidery on the center of each one. There's those beautiful little Little silky bows and cream. I love the headpiece. Maisie said headpiece. Thank you very much. Again, people are scared of headpieces. Don't be afraid of a headpiece. It makes it memorable. It makes it exciting. It makes me say, oh my God, I love you. You're so smart. She gets it. She understands. She knows. I love the shoes. I think they're perfect. I love where it hits on the actual body because it allows that silhouette to really just sort of sit so perfectly to really fall wonderfully. This is great. Very happy to see it. Love it. Next up we have Michaela Cowell and she's wearing Ferragamo. Now this is a custom look, I believe, because it doesn't really look like a whole lot of recent Ferragamo from what we've seen. It like, maybe it does and I'm just missing a look, but from what I think of Ferragamo by Maximilian Davis now, it's not usually it. But what this does feel like to me is a little bit of not Maximilian Davis for Ferragamo, just Maximilian Davis. A lot of what Max did when he was still designing his own label is these bandage crop top styles. They're somewhat inspired by little bits of swimwear and things like that. And there was a lot of sort of straps and movements and lines and things. So I feel like that's why you have this neckline with the crop top where there's a strap and then there's an off the shoulder piece and then it's a high waisted skirt. Listen, it's not my favorite look. I just think it's a little simple, a little bit blah. I think that it fits her well and that's great, but up top, not really loving it. Do I feel like I know where this is coming from and like what the reference points probably are? Yes, and I love those reference points. I own some of those reference points, but it doesn't mean that I love this. I just think there needs to be some sort of bringing it back to the Ferragamo that we've been seeing from Max recently. I don't really feel like we get that here. I think it's very Maximilian Davis, just not Ferragamo by Maximilian. Davis. Next up we have Mona Tugard who is wearing Alaya. She is also up for model of the year. A few of these women that we have seen that are models of the year, I just want to say like I am in awe of them. I don't really know a whole lot about models getting into fashion. It was very heavy models on Twitter and things like that and Instagram and everybody talking about models and I was like, I don't care about models, I care about fashion. But over the years, I go from like show to show and I sit and I wait and I talk and then I get up and I go to the next thing and I sit and I wait and I talk. These women go, get primped, polished, plucked, all these things, and then they have to walk the show in shoes. The shoes are usually too small, and then they have to like sell you on it. 
and also not trip. These women, super heroes. They are. They truly, truly are. And I think Mona Tugart is one of those women that I say, super model. She's wearing a lie. It's this beautiful floor length white dress, a turtleneck style, and pretty sheer, to be completely honest. I love the little silver bangles at the end. It feels very, very old school Aliyah to me. And then in Peter Moulier fashion, we have these little side sort of hip enhancers that are fully frothed up in some sort of gathered fabric. I like it. Again, I think it plays on this idea of Aliyah being a brand all about sort of skin tight feeling king of cling, but we're also looking at ways to emphasize those areas as well, which is something that I think Azadine Aliyah did. And at the same time, it feels very sort of modern. It feels very much so of the Instagram age. It feels like something that young women would say, oh, I wanna wear that. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's so chic. Am I amazed by it? No, but at the same time, I do genuinely think she looks nice. Next up, we have Monroe Bergdorf, who is wearing Robert One, who is another British-based designer. This is a beautiful floor-length gown. I love the bodice with that full boning running throughout it. And then the skirt is this lace-up corseted detail, but it's only from like the hips to the knee. I'm obsessed. I think it's beautiful. Robert's quintessential house coat signature pleats are there again in this illustrious purple and it creates this lovely mermaid silhouette and that's followed up by the fact that you have a semi kind of sleeve that's attached to the actual neckline by straps and hardware and things like that but it creates an almost bird-like feather effect which is something that Robert is usually inspired by that's where you get a lot of these pleats it's usually by the wings of different kinds of birds. It's a beautiful dress. And the thing is, I think it's a great example of, you can do something that's kind of simple in terms of silhouette. It doesn't have to be gigantic, doesn't have to be over the top, but there's all these really layered, beautiful little moments that all work together because they're all in the same fabric. They're all not fighting for attention. Rather, they're all just contributing little pieces, little, little nods to the brand's DNA. And also it fits her immaculately, so. I'm sold. Next up we have Olivia Culpo, who's wearing another British based designer, Miss Sohi. Again, I love a Miss Sohi moment. Truly so exciting. Listen, it's a black dress with a plunging neckline. And I know people are gonna be like, what's interesting about it? But if you look at her hips, look at these little like clamshell embellished pieces, all the pink embellishments with the black drips that run down them. Again, it exaggerates the hips. It's meant to sort of emphasize this idea of like clams and shells and things like that in that region probably has a little bit more of a deeper meaning about femininity and womanhood, but it's a beautiful dress. I love the embellishment. The clams, they open, they close, they shut, they filter, they feed. The dress just fits her immaculately, and so everybody wins. Next up, we have Paloma El Cesar, who is also up for Model of the Year. Again, in regards to who you wanted to win Model of the Year, like, don't attack other people that had nothing to do with it. Like, that's weird. That's weirdo behavior. You're strange. Listen, I'm all for critique and criticism, but like, Paloma also walked. She did her thing. You can't be mad at her. Want who you want to win, but like, don't be a weirdo about it. That's strange. So Paloma is also wearing Ferragamo. There's a lot of Ferragamo. I think everybody's like, yes, Maximilian Davis, we love you as they should. It's a dress that is partially leather. We can see that there are leather sort of elements that sit underneath this more matte black fabric. I'm gonna be honest, I don't love it. It's not my favorite dress. I like the fact that the leather peeks through this matte sort of finishing, but at the same time, I think that the neckline, it's okay, but it looks a little unfinished, looks a little undone. And I think that's an issue that for a brand like Ferragamo, it's not acceptable. Like a younger brand with not that infrastructure, I totally get it. But at the same time, like we got, if we're gonna do custom, we gotta do it right. We can't, can't mess it up. The waist doesn't really look like it fits super duper great. The other issue I think that we need to fix with these, cause I like the concept and I like the idea, is figuring out a way to flatten these patent leather pieces so that they don't rumple and create their own shape underneath the fabric, if that makes sense. Because I think that's why you're seeing a lot of these puckering and dips and things like that is the fabric underneath if that's all underneath, is causing this tension because patent leather isn't really a fabric that's super duper clingy. You really gotta work it, you gotta soften it up. I don't love the dress, I like the idea of the dress, I just don't love the dress. Next up we have Pamela Anderson who showed up wearing Stella McCartney. Listen, Pamela was the unspoken fashion icon of this most recent Paris Fashion Week and I love to see it. Here she is wearing a full white style. It seems to be a white little trouser, a white t-shirt that has a little cutout at the clavicle area and there's the Stella McCartney label, says 
Stella McCartney on it, which I think is intriguing. And then there is a white coat. I can't tell because of the exposure of the photo if it's a boucle kind of tweed. That's what it looks. It looks a little bit woolen. It looks a little bit tweedy. It looks a little bit like it got a something to it. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's cute. It's there. I've seen Pamela in better looks to be completely honest. So like, I would love to see her in more of those kind of looks. Cool casual calm. She got it. But again, I want more. Next up we have Precious Lee. Showed up in Comme des Garçons, vintage comb. I love it. I think it's cool. I think it's crazy. I think it's wacky. I think it's fun. It's this big architectural sculptural piece. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, Ray Kawakuba is a Japanese designer. And she is. Yeah, you know, I don't disagree. But at the same time, Dover Street Market is a store that she founded. And where is Dover Street? In London, in the UK. And Dover Street is successful because of London. That was the first place that made it successful. But also, it's always uplifted young, cool fashion designers. A lot of them are based in London, but there are other designers all over the world too. So I like that that's kind of what we're getting here is there's a little honor of somebody that has helped uplift other designers as she's uplifted herself. And also the piece is just cool. It looks like fingers, weird, wacky avant-garde. It's Ray Kawakubo for comb. Next up we have Rita Ora. I'm annoyed that I have to mention this because like, first things first, Rita Ora, why are you here? I get that it's in your home turf, but like still. Second thing second, the thing that I'm really annoyed about is she's wearing Primark? We're good on that. No offense to Primark, but full offense. Nobody needs high-end custom Primark dresses to be at the fashion awards. It's not fashion. I know they say it's like fast fashion. You treat people like dirt in order for them to make clothing. You're in the microplastics game. And I'm like, Rita, I bet $5 that Primark was like, we'll pay you to wear that. Also, she did like spikes down her back. That's like FX makeup. I'm still wearing Primark. That's all the jump scare we need. Next up we have Sabrina Elba who is wearing Richard Quinn. It is a simple little style. I believe that it's a two piece, not a biscuit. And there is this sort of peplum bodice creation that juts out and again, exaggerates the hips. It seems like we're seeing a lot of hip exaggeration. It's a intriguing little neckline, not too, too crazy, but I like the fact that it sort of curves in over the bust area and then sort of goes flat rather than continuing to curve down, hits the floor just ever so slightly. It's barely grazing it. It's a nice dress. It's nothing crazy. I think that it's solid, pretty commercially looking Richard Quinn style, but she looks beautiful. Next up we have Sheila Atim, who's wearing Harris Reed, another London-based designer. I like when Harris does the exposure of a corset. I think it's fun. I think it's cute. I like this almost, it looks like it's leather. I don't think it's leather. I think it's some sort of metallic fabric. I like the idea of the draped skirt. I think that's cute. I think that's fun. Again, black velvet, very much so a Harris signature textile. So I'm here for it. Overall, it's cute. It's nothing crazy. I wish you maybe had like a big hat to really bring that Harris Reed artisanal and sort of avant-garde element that I think usually he does. Overall, it fits really well. I'm not mad about that, so I'll take it. Next up, we have Simone Ashley, who is wearing Valentino. Valentino Garavani, who is Valentino, got awarded or an honored of some sort. So I think that's why we're getting it. But I love these dresses. They're like beautiful stucco dresses inspired by, I think it's like stucco vases and things. I made a video about it on TikTok. I love it. I think the neckline is beautiful. I like the halter. I love the flowers. I like the fact that it looks like it was literally ripped off a Renaissance vase. Like, I'm sold. And finally, Taylor Russell. She's a Loewe girl. We love to see it. I'm obsessed with her. I love that piece. I love this beautiful floral, two-tone, fully crystal. Those things are literally each fully crystal. It's like a bodice and it drapes down. It's almost like some sort of, you know, creeping English ivy situation. I think it's really, really beautiful. I'm not as in love with the skirt, but at the same time, I understand that for a piece like this, whatever you put underneath it, it's gonna be a little bit tough because it's a whole lot of piece. It's a whole lot of look. I do think that this silvery silk does play into not the green side of the flowers, but rather the silver side. And I think that's a smart sort of element to highlight because the part that does creep down is the green. So you're sort of allowing a little bit of the silver to play as the background. You're allowing the green to pop off of the silver skirt. And at the same time, it brings in a little bit of an element of evening wear because of the length of the skirt, the use of the fabric. So we're trying and I appreciate 
appreciate that. Do I think it's amazing? No. Do I love the top? Am I obsessed with the top? Absolutely, 100%. think it should sit in a museum. For what they had to work with in this regard, I appreciate it. But with that, we're done, it's over. Fashion awards, no more. So let's talk about best and worst. Best, I am going to give best to Lila Moss in that Nancy Dojaka. I loved Monroe Bergdorf and Robert One. Olivia Culpo, Miss Sohi. I really liked Simone Ashley in the Valentino. I thought that was really, really lovely. Amelia de Moldenberg in Chapova. And as for worst dressed, I'm gonna put Letitia Wright in the Prada in there. Paloma in Ferragamo. Rita Ora, Primark. Okay, maybe that's a good place to end off. You know what I mean? It can't get any worse than that, right? I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know what you guys thought of all the looks in the comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video. And TTYL.